Welcome to In a Prosecco, the podcast that raises a glass to moms who are transitioning from empty nester into the next beautiful phase of life as a free bird. I'm your host, Bernie Slowey. I'm a mother of two sons who have grown and flown, and I'm also a former corporate executive, filmmaker, writer, speaker, and entrepreneur who has helped women transfer into their authentic selves to uncork their infinite sparkling possibilities. So whether you're sipping a Prosecco or your favorite beverage of choice, join me as we pop open today's message in a bottle. Hello, friends. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. Let's see what the message in the bottle is today that we'll be uncorking. Oh, thank you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm going to pour. So today's episode, I actually really was excited to cover this because it was really a curious question that I got about what is the difference between empty nest syndrome and midlife crisis because both of them are not mental disorders and they're not included in the DSM-5, uh, DSM-V5. And so I wanted to kind of research it before really presenting some thoughts and the way that I've broken it down as far as categories about what could be similar, what could be different from the two because I think that there might be some crossover, but we'll see. First, cheers to you. I hope you have your beverage. Mm. Okay, so let's dive in on this because I, I'm really perplexed and I'm hoping somebody will actually be able to give me the absolute definition separately. But let's think about it. empty nest syndrome. It's the result of really having the sadness and loneliness and loss because of the change in the family home and with the children growing up. And then with midlife crisis, I think of midlife crisis as really like this cosmic two by four, as my friend Christy Bells has explained it. I love that analogy that you just get hit over the head with some kind of life change um, that is drastic. And it makes you start to wonder, you know, is this, is this really it? And I also think that some of the questions we have in the midlife crisis result in where are we in this stage of life? And I think that is a little bit of a similarity, even though it might be different in terms of definition, but the similarity of like, we start to evaluate where we are, who are we now? And where do we want to go? Who do we want to be? So in different categories that I've identified, um, the definition of the two empty nester versus midlife crisis, and then the triggers. What are the triggers? Are they, what are they similar or different? And the emotional focus as a result and the symptoms, which might be different or the same, and the age range. So let's start with triggers. So the trigger for the empty nest syndrome is that our children are leaving the nest, right? So oldest, middle, youngest, doesn't matter how many children, it seems like each time it happens with my two, very same emotions, it's much more of a realization that not only are we preparing for the big day when they move out, but then, okay, now the dynamics are gonna be changing for the household because the oldest isn't here, or that the middle child uh, has decided to move into a different room, or it just things have changed inside the house, right? With the midlife crisis, I would say the trigger there is, wow, I have hit 40, 50, 60. Am I where I want to be in my career? Am I where I want to be in life? Am I in the weight and fitness I want to be? In my life. And that's a big wake up call for me too. I was like, you know, the weight gain. And um, it just changes, right? When we talk about the, not only the, the awareness of like, how are we, where are we, where are we going to go, but our body changes too. So that's a big factor as far as I see so many people then really start to take more um, uh, 
focus on their health and being able to exercise and eat right versus when we were younger when we could eat loads of sugar and crap, right? And processed foods and we didn't gain an ounce. I remember being able to go take a nap in my teens and early 20s and wake up with a flat stomach. And that doesn't happen today. <laughs> it's like, wait a second, there is more than there was before. So then with the triggers of a uh, midlife crisis, it's just kind of one of those, or like, for instance, if you end up getting laid off from your position or you're going through a divorce or there's been a death in the family, we're at the age that not only do we lose our parents, we're starting to lose friends. A couple years ago, I lost three friends in three months. So it's a reality check of like, okay, I think of it as almost like existential angst. I think midlife crisis could be looked that way, like just a real evaluation of, wow, all the things that are happening in the world, what is it that I can control because I want to change something. So that's with the triggers that come up into a factor on whether the similar um, emotions that come from it. And that's the next one, the emotional focus. So with the midlife crisis, right, we're looking at it from a standpoint of, oh, you know, that uh, if you have gone through a divorce and or a job change, then we're going to have those more prolific questions about, well, if I was that person then, who am I now? So there's going to be much more of that, you know, am I still worthy of you know, the, all of these accomplishments in my life. And I think even when we're younger, at uh, whatever age, you know, however you were performing in school, and then you uh, go to college or go to a job and you're wondering, you know, I really want to work the, the corporate ladder, or I look at myself as far as successful if I have this much in the bank. But the emotional focus from the midlife crisis might be different when it's, you know, I, I put myself into a position of really, my family came first as a mom. So with empty nest syndrome, it's about the change that's happening and rightfully so, but there's an element, right? There's a sadness, but there's also this element of celebration. So what is that when it collides to be able to understand the emotional focus about the, the Empty nest syndrome could very well have an underscore of similar a need to evaluate just as the midlife crisis. So think about that as far as the emotional focus. Where is that coming from? Because you're also wanting to be able to have a different relationship with your child versus the midlife crisis. It may be something like where I have to evaluate all my relationships and who do I want to have in my life versus who I don't want to have in my life anymore? And if it's not this job that I'm happy with, what would make me happy? So then um, looking at the symptoms as a result of the emotional differences um, and, and the underscore of maybe the similarity of symptoms of like feeling distressed and anxiety. What is it now that uh, you know, our body speaks to us as far as what are the messages that we're getting? You know, that's the dis-ease of like where um, the distress of not feeling I am centered anymore or why am I being so teary and emotional over little things or I'm just going to be on impulse and just completely do something that I would never normally do without a thought. Um, because it was usually reliant on, you know, is this best for the family versus what's best for me? So I think that the symptoms can be very much interrelated to I'm going through empty nest syndrome, but I'm also feeling like I just got hit by a cosmic two by four. <laughs> so what is the difference? I think the underscoring symptoms really are the same. It's just that restlessness, a desire to experience something new, just it's not knowing what that next step might be right away. So then the other category of the age range, because that is really obviously, for me anyway, that it's similar 
is an empty nest syndrome uh, versus the midlife crisis is that we start that probably around 40. I know it did for me. 40 is when I went to my uh, film project and it was a result of like this whole identity crisis, right? After leaving a 20 year career. So I think that 40 is very common, that number, right? There's a big four and then there's a zero. Um, and so I think that with the midlife crisis, if you're starting earlier versus 50 or 60, I, I don't think it matters. It's, it's, it's the same range because we're also at that point where our kids are at the age of it's time to, for them to go ahead and have their own journey and explore. And that's part of this big celebration, right? We did our job. But then when we're having the less distractions as a result, um, we're, we're really forced to look at and evaluate. And I think that is the age range of what's so similar about the two is that really, if we could potentially look at it as, would I want to do something different at this point? Or is it the same values? And I saw a wonderful movie, Wayne Dyer's The Shift. It was actually a book, but I watched his movie and learned that some of the differences that come from the ages actually is between men and women. So we could actually see some differences in how we handle the empty nest syndrome and midlife crisis. For moms and women, the values of when we were growing up and before a major life change is usually the focus is about the community and outside of ourselves and wanting to have this connection. So we really do things for others. It's not so much that we put ourselves first. Being selfish seems like a, you know, a, a naughty thing to say. Like you don't want to be selfish, do you? No, we have to think about others. And are we generous of our time and all of the um, talents and, 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 you know, the efforts that we put towards not just our family, but whatever we're doing to also give back and volunteering in our communities. So by nature of being female, that is something that I think that Wayne Dyer is absolutely spot on, that doing a, this survey that he talked about between men and women, women were definitely much more outside focused. For men, before the big values, before the big cosmic two by four hit to the head, it's really about what's my level of success. And it's going to be about career, financial gain, social status, and other things as relating to prowess. You know, there's much more of that internal. Who am I being out in the world? How do I appear to be out in the world? And that is the measurement of success. So then Wayne Dyer explains that after the survey of when something prolific happened in somebody's life that was a great change. The values also shifted between men and women. Men had this realization that, wait a second, there is more than just me. It's much more than myself and what it means to be successful. There's a need to be a part of community. It's important to have that sense of like, what am I leaving as a legacy? And is it just a career? Or do I want to give back in some way? And so the value of like, I have to have something bigger than myself, which is very intriguing to me, because for women, the values shift so that it's no longer about, I have to meet the needs of everyone else first. That shifts on to ourselves. And, and so we start to say, wait a second, it's okay if I take time for myself and do things for me first. Kind of like the oxygen mask on yourself first in order to be able to help others. We need to be centered and be able to have that also sense of self who are we and taking the time to really do that deep dive and inner work that is really necessary i think that's consciousness that is where we have a whole new level of awareness 
men and women. And there's no right or wrong. I really don't believe that. I think because we're so unique and our childhoods are all different. The birth order, it doesn't matter if we're in the same household. Siblings are going to have potentially different views on their childhood. They might relate together as far as having the same parents. But when it comes to, hey, I might have had a different experience because I didn't have the same relationship with mom or dad or, you know, or the expectations or the, you know, we're all driven in certain ways. We're all here on the planet for a purpose. And it means that we're supposed to kind of understand that we're not all meant to be the same. And we're all learning differently in our own time frame. So there's no pressure as to, okay, I'm 60 and I haven't hit that cosmic two by four yet. That's okay. I think it all ultimately does come back to us, that consciousness and awareness. And I would even say that instead of the cosmic two by four, what if it was a cosmic handshake that this was an agreement that if I didn't get it the first time and I completely do the pattern over and over and over again, that yeah, maybe the handshake agreement was, you know what, we're going to really make it so that the rug is going to be pulled from underneath you because you just didn't wake up. <sighs> I need a drink. I think that the handshake perspective so that it's not because life is happening to us. Life is happening for us. When things are falling apart, are they really falling into place? You know, with the, the appearance of it from the outside may be that, oh my gosh, this is, you know, this upheaval, or I'm just not ready for it. I'd like to think of it as really, what if we were to embrace every emotional distress? The fact that at our age range, what if we were to actually celebrate it and just you know, I don't know if there's a culture out there that I can think of that really embraces growing old. Um, I just don't think that it's a Western culture appreciation with all the wisdom, you know, that the grandparents live as part of the family of the nucleus family. They're not separated from them. And that maybe we need to be reevaluating what it means for retirement, you know, so that we aren't putting this pressure on ourselves that this is a retirement age and this is why I need to work really hard and make sure that my IRA is ready for me for when I retire financially versus, well, what is retirement? What if it was just re-inspirement? Okay, I have gone through this great career, but I'm bored or I need to stretch this feeling of complacency and being comfortable. Maybe I need to grow. I think that's part of our soul evolution. Like there's this need to constantly grow. I mean, that's why we're here. We have a purpose to fulfill. And, you know, when sometimes as with the empty nest syndrome, you know, maybe we put everything on the back burner because of the kids. But then the midlife crisis, is it because, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm achieving great heights, got a great title, great pay, but I'm not happy. I'm going into a job that I absolutely hate. Or I've got an a-hole of a boss. And, uh, you know, who am I working for? Or the business that you created is, you know what, I, I, I was happy with this, but maybe I just need to do something a little bit different to stretch my creative juices. Whatever the case may be, the conscious awareness of where you are and being okay with it and not running from it, because I think that's what causes these, these, you know, the reactions versus responses to midlife crisis or the emptiness syndrome. And, you know, the, this fancy sports car, which I, I think that gets a bad rap because I think at some point you do want to reward yourself, right? Now, if you're <laughs> going to get divorced and you want to find someone who's way younger than you, I'm sure there's a phenomenon for that and whatever that's called. But, you know, is it 
more that are we in denial of what is to be celebrated as part of the natural progression of life? Yeah, and I'm not judging. I'm just saying this is something to be aware of, right? Just more of that consciousness. That is why we were given consciousness to be able to evolve more than just, you know, animals or that when you think of wisdom that comes with the ages, that's what I am embracing. You know, if I, it's the whole saying about if I only knew then what I know now. Of course, because that was part of our growth and evolution. And even with the body changes, it's social media. It's the, you know, the social constructs of like what fits into like what you fit into. It's not. It's it really ought to come down to our happiness. And are we really living life authentically as to who we truly are? And are we really showing up in the world? present to share the gifts that we were here to share. Now, I think of that as the heart and mind cohesion of when we can stop being up in our head all the time about like, you know, what are people thinking about me? Or I can't do this because I'm afraid of what people might think of me, or I might fail. And what if, you know, then I'd be ostracized. I'd say, don't give a flying flip. Your happiness and being able to be in balance with your heart and mind, that is what's important. And remember, as parents, we're role modeling always for our kids. doesn't matter how old they are. You know, for me, I, I still want to give my reason or give, give reason to my life because I, in a way, want to still inspire my kids to follow their happiness and their pursuit of their own personal success and know that, yeah, they're on their journey, whatever it might look like, there's going to be failures. And when they were younger, I used to really be judgmental about it because I just didn't want them to have the pain that I did. But failure is not failure if you learn from it, right? We want to be able to do it differently then. That's that's growing and learning and that's intelligence. Yeah, I didn't know this, but now I do. That's the lifelong pursuit of growing into our best, truest self. But really knowing what it means to actually go beyond what societal expectations are. And this is about you, you, you know, we're kind of in a sandwich generation of we're losing our parents, still want to care for our kids and make sure that they are getting all the support and love and, and hugs they need when life hits them over the head with cosmic two by four. But if we are completely accepting that regardless of what label we put on emptiness syndrome and midlife crisis. It truly comes together as the same construct of it's a life evaluation and you're doing great because if you're watching this and you're asking yourself, hmm, am I where I want to be? Am I who I want to be? I might not know where I'm going and I don't know what it looks like down the road, but that is the beauty of it. We don't have to have the answers. We just need to know that, hey, I've got some questions and I'm willing to see it through, see what those answers might be. So toast to you. Cheers. Definitely subscribe and like and comment. Until next time. Cheers. If you enjoyed this episode of In a Prosecco, be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted. Rate and review the show, and please do comment and share ideas for topics that are important to you. A friend who cares is a friend who shares. Here's a toast to you on your re journey. Cheers. <laughs>